We begin this morning in darkness, in a world filled with doubt, waiting for even a glimmer of hope. Quietly we sit, surrounded by darkness, forgetting sometimes that God sits with us. We sit, having seen our Savior crucified, surrounded by our grief beside the tomb. And yet, even in the darkness, as we sit, the Spirit of God moves closer, bringing hope, bringing promise, bringing light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Alleluia! Christ has risen! Christ has risen indeed! Alleluia! Come walk with the God of new beginnings, God who discovers strength in weakness, who loves in the face of indifference, who brings life in the midst of death. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Alleluia! Come, let us worship our risen Lord. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. God of all people, the shadows and darkness of Good Friday have been cleared away by the light that can only come from you. We rejoice in your power, power that turns our sorrows into joy, our despair into hope, our mourning into dancing, and our death into life. Help us on this Easter morning to burst out of the tombs that have trapped us, tombs of selfishness and sinfulness. May we burst forth with new life and new love on this Easter day, sharing your love with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
confess our sins together. God of Good Fridays, we see in your death the good news of our own resurrection. We feel the despair of our own Good Fridays, wondering if Easter will ever come. We confess our need to be resurrected. We need the promise of new life and the hope of conquered death. On this Easter morning, break through the barriers of our sin and shame and bring your peace to our troubled hearts. Friends, today brings the best news of all. The tomb is empty. Death is forever defeated. Jesus lives. The weight of hearts broken by the weight of sin has been taken from us. My friends, through Christ our living Lord, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The first reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, beginning with the first verse. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. 
Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when the sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Reading from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. You have been raised to life with Christ. So set your hearts on the things that are in heaven, where Christ sits on his throne at the right side of God. Keep your minds fixed on things there, not on things here on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your real life is Christ and when he appears, then you too will appear with him and share his glory. Hey friends, happy Easter. It is so good to see you at least this way. I wish I could see you in person and I cannot wait until we can do that. It's going to be awesome to have you all back at church again. But until then, I brought a friend to show you guys today. Do you want to see? Do you know what this is? Oh my goodness, I just about dropped him. Do you know what that is? What is that? That's a caterpillar, right? And a caterpillar slides along the ground and he eats yummy leaves. And he gets his tummy so big and full. And when he's full enough, he starts to climb into a cocoon, right? And he climbs in and he's going to go in there and he's going to sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. If he could fit in. Goodness. There we go. Get our friend inside. Yeah. Right? And what happens when he's in his cocoon? Do you know? What do you think happens? Does he grow bigger or smaller? Yeah, he gets a little, little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And then his cocoon starts to come open. And what happens? Oh, he comes out as a butterfly, right? And he flies all over the place and he's beautiful and changed and bigger. And he's just how God made him to be. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, butterflies are beautiful. Do you know that God changes you guys too? He does. He changes you. Because if you go back and look at your baby pictures when you were really, really tiny, you've changed a lot since then. You've gotten bigger and stronger. And now you can do all sorts of things that you couldn't do before, right? It's pretty awesome how God is always working in us and he's working and changing us whether we're at home or at church or at school or wherever we get to go. That's pretty awesome. But you know what's really, really cool? That God is with us when we're big and God is with us even when we're teeny tiny like a caterpillar. That's what I know about God today. Should we pray together? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us change and being with us when we grow. 
Thank you, God, for never leaving us and always being with us. We love you, God. Amen. Awesome job, guys. Happy Easter. See you soon. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she wept, bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know how you start your morning in these days, whether you turn on the news right away or you wait until you've been awake for a while. I don't know if you reach for your phone before you've even gotten out of bed or if you wait until you have breakfast first. But I do know that it's probably not too far into the, your morning before you're checking in on the work of death. Maybe it happens when you watch the morning news. Maybe it happens when you read the morning paper. Maybe it's set to be one of the web pages that opens when you open your phone or your computer. How many people have COVID-19 in our area now? How many people have died since the last time you looked? What famous people have the disease now? Does anyone you know personally have it? Now, more than any recent time in our society, we check in on the work of death. And checking in on the work of death was exactly the reason Mary Magdalene headed to the tomb that Easter morning. She was headed to the tomb to anoint the body. 
to do the last thing she could do for the one whom she had called her Lord and teacher. Our gospel tells us that she went alone, and she must have wondered how she would move the stone. It was still dark when she went, but not so dark that she couldn't see that that huge stone had been rolled away. She immediately assumed that someone had taken the body. Often when criminals were executed in Jesus' day, they were buried in mass graves together. Perhaps that was her fear, that someone had taken her Lord and she hadn't even really been ready to say goodbye yet. She goes back and tells the disciples that Jesus is missing. And then it's this foot race to the tomb. The other, disciples get there, the other disciple gets there first, but he is still too scared to go in. Peter gets there, and in his typical brash manner, he goes running right into the tomb. They see the grave clothes lying there. They head home, not sure of what it all means. Confused. Bewildered. Mary, meanwhile, can't even muster the strength to go home. She stands outside the tomb, weeping. Weeping for the loss of her teacher. Weeping for the loss of her Lord. Weeping for the loss of her friend. Weeping for the unknowns and the fears and the terror at what is going to happen next. Weeping for all those reasons. When suddenly two angels and then Jesus himself appears. But Mary doesn't realize that it's Jesus. She doesn't even recognize him in her grief. She doesn't see it is him until he speaks her name, Mary. And then suddenly she sees him and she is filled with joy and hope. But Jesus tells her not to hold on to him, that his job isn't done yet. Mary runs and tells the disciples and they wonder about what she has said. Later that evening, the disciples are locked together in a room for fear of the Jews. They're huddled together, trying to figure out what to do in a world that feels upside down and backwards. They're huddled together, trying to make sense of it all. When Jesus shows up and stands among them and says, peace be with you. And in that simple sentence, the disciples go from fear to hope. Our text tells us they were overjoyed when they got to see the Lord standing there among them. We understand so well the emotions of that first Easter of the fear that ran abundantly through them all. The fear of Mary as she went to the tomb, the fear of that first disciple who wouldn't go in by himself, the fear of all the disciples that hid together and those doors locked, afraid for their lives. We understand the grief that Mary felt at losing the one she loved, at not knowing what to do, of being overcome and unable to act. In fact, I'm willing to bet this Easter, we understand the fear and the grief more than most Easter's we've ever experienced. This Easter, we, understands what it, we understand what it feels like to be stuck inside, worrying about what might come from the world outside our doors. We know what it feels like to be overcome with loss. Loss of a life we knew, loss of those who struggle with this disease, even loss of strangers we never knew. We get the fear and the loss this morning. But we also need to remember that just as Jesus meets folks where they are at that first Easter morning, he does the same for us. He comes among them and brings peace, and he does that for each of us too. Jesus comes to you this morning and reminds you that death doesn't have the last word. Jesus comes amidst your fears and your unspoken hurts and says, peace be with you. Jesus comes among those whom you've gathered with and reminds you that as amazing as his resurrection is, he's not 
done yet. Jesus is going ahead of us and preparing a place that is better than we can possibly imagine. He's going and preparing a place where we can have an unbroken, never separated, abiding place with God. Death is not the end, my friends. It is merely the beginning. God takes the chaos of death and creates the beauty of the resurrection. God takes the fear and the grief and fills us with unending joy. So, hallelujah, friends. Christ has risen, and may he come to bring you peace and hope this morning. Let's pray. God of new life, we thank you for sending your son to earth to live among us and to die for us. And we thank you that death does not get the last word. Remind us as we struggle in this life with fears and grief, that death doesn't win. Remind us that you come to bring hope. You come to bring joy. You come to go ahead of us and prepare a place for us that is more amazing than we can possibly imagine. Thank you, God, for loving us, for teaching us, for sending your Son for us and for never leaving our sides. In your grace-filled name we pray. Amen.
Easter morning as we profess our faith together through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, let us pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. God of grace, we thank you that you come and meet us where we are. We thank you that you bring us peace. Open our eyes to see you at work in our lives and in the world around us. Keep our hearts burning for your work in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for those who face another winter storm and for those who are seeing signs of spring begin to come. Teach us all to care for the world that you have made and help us to not take your creation for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, walk with all refugees who leave their homes to move to safety. Protect them on their journey. Greet them with hospitality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you heal us and make us whole again. We pray for all who have not been granted the healing they desire, and for all who cannot access the care that they need. We especially lift up to you this morning all those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19, those who care for them, and for all essential workers in this pandemic. Bring healing to our world, Lord, as only you can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our provider, we thank you that you bless us with more than enough. We pray for those who find themselves unemployed and underemployed today. Give them hope for the future and peace in this season of waiting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you choose us to be witnesses to your love. Bless those celebrating Easter with loved ones, and be with those who are alone today for whatever reason. Fill us all with your love and hope, no matter where today finds us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Lord, gather us in your grace and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. these last few weeks apart, let us pray for our offerings. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, my friends, receive the blessing. He is not here, for he is risen. He is risen indeed. We do not have to fear death. He is risen. We do not have to be afraid of the past. He is risen. We do not have to be afraid of the dark. He is risen. As we go forth from this place, may we proclaim this message with our whole being. And may the blessings of God, who has overcome death, strengthen you this week. He is risen. Thanks be to God. Amen.
and peace to love and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.